fox knew her last cub would be waiting for her at the first tree. She was almost there. The rain cascaded onto the jade valley where the entrance to the tree was. Life was protected there, because that's where life began. It was now only a mother and a daughter left. Items from my life still dotted the ground as she moved closer to her destination. And destiny. something I hadn't felt in a long time. Drive. I looked into the best architecture schools on the west coast, then got a dose of reality when looking at other students' portfolios and the high cost of tuition. I still wanted to be something, to be the next Alvaro Siza, and to make those thousands of sketches worth something in my grand history. But now even an internship sounds impossible. Siza helped me understand how essential emotion is in architecture, and he also said light is the real composer of space. I like to think these glints of light, like not finding a job, or even a strange dream about a fox, are something I should be thankful for, even if the illuminated space is something I'm less than comfortable with. a forklift flipped over due to a bad axle and it crushed one of the workers there. My dad didn't eat for days, even though he wasn't directly involved, it devastated him. Not only did it hurt the business, but it just freaked him out. He would talk in his sleep, muttering things about firing people and saying sorry. One fateful day he approached me, said that since my school search wasn't going well, I should finally be a man and take over the family business. He said one day he was going to die, and that all of his work, sacrifice, and even that man's life would be wasted in vain. I just lost it. Teenage me just exploded at the thought. I screwed up. I said things I shouldn't have. He was having a crisis, and I pretty much spit in his face.
Was that the last time you talked to him? No, I called on holidays, and he would call on my birthday. I guess we acted like nothing ever happened, which was stupid. I didn't want to ask about his lumberyard, and I'm sure he didn't want to ask about my job search. I never went back and visited. I think the last conversation we had was about what movies we had seen and what exactly a best boy is in the credits. I thought he would be here so much longer. In the distance, the first tree illuminated the wasteland. She couldn't go home anymore. She did the only thing she was capable of. Moving forward. My dad died alone in the middle of the wilderness. I should have been talking to him more. I should have done a lot of things differently. If the first tree on earth brought life with it, if it taught the birds to sing and fly and showed saplings how to grow, what could it do for us? received yesterday from a name I didn't recognize with a quote I can't stop thinking about. Death is not the opposite of life, but a part of it. More and more, I'm realizing one important truth. Each of us have our own journey to the first tree, but sometimes I'm not sure I'm ready to take that first step. You already have my love. her journey was over, but I have no idea, it was only a dream, a distraction from tomorrow. I don't think dreams normally bring back to memory so many important feelings. Maybe it was just a dream, but it was also a gift. 
Yeah, I suppose. But tomorrow we're getting on a plane to the last place on Earth I want to be. The only person that would have made the trip worth it is gone. You're going to see him and be with him one last time before you say goodbye. I have one last quote for you by Emerson, sealed in an imaginary letter from me to you. It is the secret of the world that all things subsist and do not die, but only retire a little from sight and afterward return again. Go to sleep, my love. We have a big day tomorrow, but I'll be there with you every step of the way. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Good night, Rachel. Good night, Joseph. <laughs>